Hi, yeah, my name is Cara. I'm working here in Yap 19 years. I suppose the first thing I do, the most important thing I do, is I'm, I'm the first point of contact for people that come to Yap or ring Yap. Um, I'd organise for people to come in for assessments. One of the main things I would be saying to people is this, this service is a confidential service. Um, I think it's very important for people to know when they come here what stays here, you know, stays here. Um, uh, another thing I do here is I bring people around on visits. Uh, we have a lot of people that come and want to see what we do. Um, that would be students or would be other professionals either in this area or another area. And I bring them around and show them the project and tell them about what we do here. Uh, one of the things I would be very proud of that we do here in YAP is when we're working with people, um, people aren't just defined by addiction or what's going on for them around addiction. It's, it's what's going on for them in total. So if there's stuff going on like um, homelessness, like health related issues, like literacy issues, um, we, we do support people in that. Um, people that come here aren't just um, addicted. We have people that come here that are, are living with addiction. We have people coming, looking for training. Uh, there's all different types of, of people that come through our door. When the person comes through the door, it's, it's a very brave thing to do. Um, and we, we walk beside them in that journey um, because we realise how brave it is for them to do it and uh, everyone's success, as some people ask, would be true to them. So for one person walking through the door is success, another person, you know, is a different success for them but we value their opinion and value their rate of where they want to change. Sometimes people just need somewhere to come in and say hello and to have a chat. Sometimes it's coming in and having a cup of coffee and it's not talking about what's going on for them or, or you know what's wrong in their life. It's just a human being sitting down with another human being, having a cup of coffee, having a chat. We are a community response um, and sometimes that's what our response is, just being part of that community we're in. My name is Brian Foley and I'm the Client Programs Coordinator here in the Ballymun Youth Action Project. Um, so here in the Ballymun Youth Action Project, we like to help people to solve their own issues and um, come up with their own solutions to their own difficulties. We don't see ourselves as experts in anybody's lives. I guess as workers, we see ourselves that we have um, we have experience of working with other people in the past, and we have knowledge. I guess that we've learned from science, research, experience. Um, and we'd like to add that to what the person brings into the room, their own knowledge of themselves, their own experience of themselves, trying to make changes in the past. So we would see the way we work as almost a partnership, a collaborative partnership towards helping people to solve their own problems or, or make changes that they need to make in their life to have a better life for themselves. So there are a number of different programs that are available if people want to get into that kind of educational development piece there's the complementary therapies, which involves acupuncture, uh, which is again helpful for dealing with stress, but also helpful for helping stimulate different parts of the body that are at work, maybe when people are trying to change, if they're looking at reducing a substance or coming off a substance. So the complementary therapies are very useful for that, but they also help people relax and get sleep again, because sometimes when people have been using different substances to help them relax, to help them sleep, when they stop using those substances, the body kind of struggles to adjust itself, so the acupuncture can help. There's also a different groups or different drop-in settings where people can come in and, and get together again. The drop-ins are, are less formal, they're more like almost places of contact or points of contact. Again, for people to check in with staff, maybe other people, see how other people are getting on, but it doesn't really have a formal structure to it. It's more a contact time. And then there are groups as well, if people wanted to link into a group where they can get help from other people in a similar situation and they can also help people in that similar situation. We walk up with a roof upstairs which has a lot of different courses available 
uh, different VTAC level courses around addiction. So sometimes it, it's useful for people to do them courses as part of their treatment. If they decide to, to learn about addiction or learn about drugs, uh, learn about its effects on family, that in itself, that extra knowledge can be a great incentive for people to continue to make the changes that they're making. Uh, we provide training in relation to uh, drug and alcohol misuse. So uh, we're part of the Ballymun Youth Action Project and since its inception back in the early 80s, uh, there was that awareness around the staff who worked here at the time um, that there was a need to provide education to the communities and to people in the community in relation to substances and their effects and also the impact upon families and uh, those living with addiction in the home. Um, and I suppose that it was seen as, as being as significant in, some, in many ways as providing support to individuals um, in, in one to one work and, and the various different drop in services and all of that. So it, it was always there kind of if you like throughout the years in different guises um, and then into the 1990s um, the first community addiction studies course was run in 1994. Um, so then from there uh, the, the work of education began to take a very, very specific focus within the, the project's remit, if you like. We provide the Level 5 Community Addiction Studies course and we also run a Level 7 diploma in partnership with UCD. Um, and we run a variety of, we've kind of developed and uh, provide a variety of one and two day workshops um, that are uh, specific to different aspects of the, the drug and alcohol work, if you like. Uh, some of those could be the likes of CBT, cognitive behavioural therapy, community reinforcement approach training, working with alcohol misuse, uh, women and substance use, um, and motivational interviewing. So there's various different types of skill skill sets that people can add to maybe what they've already got, or if they're beginning to learn about uh, working with people on a one-to-one -one basis. Typically, people who avail of training with us uh, would come from a variety of back backgrounds across the spectrum. Um, we have people who maybe have left education early um, and uh, for a whole variety of reasons and they, they may be now returning to education so they may start off with us on a one day or a two day programme. They may then go on to doing the level five community addiction studies course and in some cases they will continue on then to doing the level seven um, diploma in community drug and alcohol work. Um, and also from that, they have the opportunity, if they can avail of it, to go on to do the level uh, eight degree in social science with UCD. Um, and last year we had, typically we have 20 to, 20 to 25 people who complete the Diploma in Community Drug and Alcohol course each year. And f of those this year, nine have gone on to do the level eight uh, social science degree with UCD, which is really quite significant. My name is Emer. I'm one of the aftercare counsellors in Ballymunyap. I work within the aftercare service, so what I would do is would do a lot of one-to-one -one counselling with lots of people maybe coming in who are drug or alcohol free or who are looking to reduce their alcohol use and become alcohol free or people who maybe are looking to detox off methadone. So it's a very holistic service, you know, we kind of meet people where they're at. So you don't necessarily have to be drug or alcohol free, you can be working towards that, trying to make change in your alcohol or drug use. I also would work in the prisons, so I would do one-to-one -one prison visits with maybe people that are incarcerated with, within all the prisons in, in the catchment area, the Dublin catchment area, people from Ballymun who maybe are you know, pre-release or people who post-release who come out of prison and are looking for supports 
a lot of the time people coming into aftercare uh, are quite stable so you know they might be hitting things in their in their lives that are you know causing them a lot of distress so you know I suppose the kind of work I do would maybe go a little deeper for some people who are ready to do that kind of work so people may be suffering with a lot of anxiety people with issues around you know relationships or maybe some childhood traumas all kinds of you know experiences that people have had a lot of the time people come in and just use the space really to to look at those issues and deal with those problems that that are now facing them to look at addressing uh, developmental issues if you like sometimes i do a little bit of nutrition input um, just around people trying to improve their diet people's diets very compromised by drug use alcohol use so I do a little bit of work around that so also within aftercare I link in with a lot of the other services within the Ballymun area so we do a lot of interagency work huge amount of progression routes into education that's one of the things I find a lot that people who become stable or drug free just are desperate to progress on into training education so we have the Ballymun Job Centre we have the STAR project here we have a lot of interagency uh, networks within the community that you know we link in with that brings people on and makes them progress on to further education so that's a big part of the aftercare role. My name is Carl O'Brien I'm a community addiction counsellor here in the Youth Action Project last 12 years my role takes in obviously one-to-one -one individual work including key work and care planning uh, treatment planning, looking at, I suppose, working with people in terms of their process of change. Uh, one of my key responsibilities is also the role of working within the drop-in area, which is where we are now today. Um, it's a, a service that is an open access point for service users to come in, so because I'm based on the ground floor, people can just arrive, they don't need to have a timetabled appointment, they can just uh, walk in. So we're providing brief interventions, crisis interventions for people accessing uh, this part of the building. key part to the work would also be the role that I have in terms of coordination of the Boxing Clever programme, which is a 20-week programme that combines sport, education and rehabilitation. Uh, it's run in three locations across the community and it involves 11 uh, stakeholders and practitioners involved in delivery of that. So that starts in September and runs up until mid-March, uh, roughly around 20, 20 participants involved in each programme as it rolls around. Another key part of the work is obviously the involvement around community collaboration uh, and being involved in a lot of networks and representation representation of BAP at them subgroups so again they would be looking at prevention education treatment rehab areas of the drug task force i'd also be involved in the the network so there's an equal youth network that uh, looks at training and delivery of training to young people particularly in Ballymun that may come from uh, an early school even background and I also be heavily involved in the initiatives that, that are rolled out because of that. One of the further initiatives of that again coming from um, what's happening and responses on the ground will be the cannabis initiative which is a subgroup that looks at the impact that cannabis is having on the community and again trying to develop responses um, to, to cannabis use in, in Ballymun. An additional part of the work is also to support the GP uh, council, uh, the GP practice, the primary care unit over in, in the in the civic centre so we work with referrals and then we uh, support patients in terms of that they will be presenting with having substance use issues <music>
some of the uh, programs we run within the day program um, is uh, so our reduce the use, um, relapse prevention programs, process groups, um, and um, harm reduction uh, cocaine workshops. We're presently running a, an addiction and change program. The program is being run in three parts. The first part is about addiction. The second part is about um, change and the third part is about maintaining change. Um, I suppose looking at the program and looking at participation, the participation on a weekly basis for the Addiction and Change program is about 60 to 80 percent. So I'm really looking forward to um, the evaluation of that program to see if the participants felt the same way about the program as we do, which is running really well. The useful partnership that we have is with the Ballymont Adult Read and Write Scheme. They sent tutors in here to work with us and help people develop their literacy skills, reading, writing, spelling, etc. Um, again, when people are making changes, sometimes an obstacle to continue on that change is their own literacy levels. Uh, maybe their drug use when they were younger led to them kind of not quite getting qualifications or certificates that way. So that partnership with the Ballymont Adult Read and Write has been really useful for the people who come into the service to help them develop their skills so that they can kind of do homework with their kids, they can practically fill out forms, they can put in application forms, they're, they're confident when it comes to reading material. So that's been a useful partnership and we do that on a weekly group here with shooters from the, the Ballymont Adult Read and Write and it's been very helpful for people in terms of moving on from addiction. My name is Mary Fitzpatrick and um, I work as part of the Infant Parent Support Project. Um, so one of the roles that I have there is to work with a craft group. So we started with a Christmas craft group um, and it was popular, people enjoyed taking part in it. Um, it allowed people a space to concentrate on themselves in a safe environment um, on their own skills and the really lovely thing about crafts and arts is that there's no wrong way of doing it so it was people about people discovering their own creativity people also talked about as it being a social a good social environment where they met new people made new friends and um, were very relaxed um, and we always enjoy new people taking part and sharing their creative skills with us um, I coordinate and um, I'm the parent advocate worker for the Ballymont Stratton and Families program. So, and again, there, there would be crossover because we would have client, you know, common clients um, with both um, programs. Um, that's a 15 week program where we work with parents and young people. So there's one program works with primary school children, there's one works with teens who are in secondary school. So we do 15 weeks with the families. Um, where we look at issues like communications, peer pressure, dealing with stress, dealing with anger, um, putting boundaries in place. It's basically any issues the families struggle with. So, um, and that's been running in Ballymun for almost 10 years now, and we've almost 200 families have completed the programme. Hi, my name is Vera Hughes, and I work here in YAP as an Infant Parent Support Coordinator. And it's a new innovation at the Ballymun Drugs Task Force. I link with mums through their pregnancy and until the children are two or three. And for the last four or five years, I've been studying the theory of infant mental health and how they learn about things. How they learn about themselves is how they're responded to. How they learn to value themselves is how they feel they're valued in that first relationship, usually with the mum or dad or some primary caregiver. So it's really important that mums are supported to be able to support their babies. So it's about minding the minders. Um, and the three aims of my post are the good physical health of babies, which would be antenatally to making sure the mums are attending their appointments in the hospital, they're eating well, and they understand the importance of caring for themselves in pregnancy. Um, and then obviously when the babies are born, it's again the mental and physical health of those babies. So the importance of you know, good diet for babies, weaning at the proper time. You know, you have all these myths of, you know, your granny said she'll give them mashed potatoes for three weeks, aren't they fine? But it is bad for baby's digestion and it's to explain that to the mums. And then about the importance of, you know, vaccinations and attending appointments with the public health nurses. So I would work closely with the hospitals, with the public health nurses, the speech therapists and all other services here in Ballymun and in the greater community. 
Another aim is the mum's physical health. So, you know, to care for her during the pregnancy and to help her look after herself. Because as women, you know, you need to be physically well and emotionally well to be there for your baby. So it's about, you know, her eating well and taking time out. So, you know, mindfulness or here in, in YAP, we would give, you know, acupuncture, we have relaxation classes, they're starting a new yoga course. So all of those things for the mum to avail of. And the third, I suppose, part of my job is education and, you know, the wider community. So it's about making people aware of how important it is to support our parents so that they can support their babies. Because it's really about building up a therapeutic relationship with the mums. And if you don't have that, it's very difficult to, you know, move further with anything else. Most of my work is home visits because obviously, you know, the middle of December or in the middle of June even, you've just come home, you have a small baby. It's not that easy to make an appointment here in this building. And because I've been out in the homes, I've seen there's lots of other pressures on mums and dads. Now I have a colleague working with me part time and her background would be very much in um, parenting classes or child development. So it's great to have somebody else who can key work those issues so that it's not taking the mum's focus off my job, which is the mum and that baby and that relationship. And that's what I love about my job because I have the ability to help them be the best parent they can. Something that's been happening here and we've been aware of it, like we kicked off a recognition event two years ago as a way of acknowledging and uh, affirming people who had made changes. So we, ran that in, we run that in September as part of Recovery Month. There are a number of other initiatives we, we run in September to again acknowledge that people are in reco people are recovering, people are making changes from drug use. We link in with Recovery Walk Ireland. Um, we bring a group into the Recovery Walk, and it's a walk which is a symbol, which symbolises just again the efforts that people are making to change, and it's quite a popular event. We launched our Recovery Quilt, which was again another kind of activity type program we had here for a while where people create quite a quite a large quilt. Um, each patch on that quilt somebody created and used to somehow symbolise something that helped them to change. And then coming to the end of recovery month we had our annual certificate presentation where <coughs> certificates were given out for the various programs that I mentioned. People came up and got certificates who had successfully completed their programs and also the addiction studies course that we run here in, in Yap as well, that are loose run. So we had a, a lot of people come in that night to get certificates for all them various courses. And again, to celebrate the, the work they've put in, in sometimes difficult situations. When we were based in, in, in the block of flats in Ballymun, one of the advantages to us was the confidentiality thing there because anyone could go into that block and they could be going to visit anyone in that block of flats, anyone that lived there. So. Nobody would know that it, someone coming into that block was necessarily going to go into a drug service. One of the obstacles is now that it's people can be kind of seen to come in. So it's another one of those barriers for people to face when they actually want to try to get help. And another barrier sometimes can be the, the word youth. And although we started uh, because of young people dying back in the 80s, early 80s, 1980, the, the word youth at the time was seen by the management committee that we were going to be working with young people and trying to help young people not to have problems with drugs. The situation now nowadays is different. The majority of people who come into the service now are adults um, up until people in their 70s coming in. Different age. So the, the age range now of people coming into the service is, is much more adults, although we've decided to kind of keep the name because it's, it's our history, I guess, it's our origins and it's important to kind of keep a foot there as well. Well, I think of Yap himself, uh, I think it's a brilliant place for anyone that's in dire straits or has any obstacles in their way. Yap is the place to come because I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for Yap. I came to Yap and wait Yap a couple of, good couple of years now, but I wouldn't be standing where I am today. And I can honestly say, that I'm standing tall because of Yap, the support I've got from Yap. They actually talk to you as if, like really treat you as a person. So it's two adults having a conversation. Whether you're in dire straits or not, 
they're just on your side, the same level as yourself. They don't look at you any differently. Where counsellors in the past can kind of look at you differently, like they're higher than you, but yeah, they don't. We're all on the same level. Um, it's very part important to the addict. Uh, so that no one is higher than them. Do you know what I mean? Because that is a big thing. If if like I wouldn't be consistently coming to yeah if I thought that yourself that you thought you were higher than me. But mm. I learned by coming to yeah that no everyone is equal, no matter what. Like and that's the way yeah look at you. So I think yeah is the place to be for anyone that's starting off in a very low place. No, I think you should keep going the way you're going because uh, I've done family thing here with Dam. I think it is the family things with him and in the room there like none of us could talk at home like we all scream at each other my kids and all i brought two of the kids here and i have to say air life the whole family life kind of changed do you know what i mean instead of us showing at each other now we can all have a conversation talking so it's not raised voices so i have to say i just think yeah yeah it's the only place in bally one for someone to come to if they're really low this is the place that will bring them back Hi, my name's Susan and, and my name's Katrina <laughs> and we are the project workers in Yap in the drop-in centre um, down here with Carl. So myself and Katrina have started up an outreach service whereby we go out into the community and we're trying to make links with either people who used to use the service in the past and have dropped off for various reasons or people who haven't used the service in the past and um, to try and get them to make links with the service. So when we meet people either that were past clients or new clients, um, we will invite them over for our Tuesday afternoon drop-in, which is half two to half three. And this is where they have an opportunity to meet um, other staff, because there's five of us that run that. Mm -hmm. And they can meet other people, um, other clients that come here. And we also have sandwiches and tea and coffee. Um, it's also a place where they can ask for support in terms of maybe a one-to-one -one or brief intervention. Um, you know, if there's some homeless issue mm -hmm. or, you know... the Linking men's them in with yeah, medical services. Yeah, exactly. Kind of thing. We've done that, linked people over to the men's network as well, mm -hmm. so they can get fresh clothes and that. Um, so that's our drop-in afternoon service. We also have the drop-in centre here, which if there's one or two of us available, um, we'll have the door on the right open, um, and that means people can just pop into us. And I suppose the drop-in service and the drop-in afternoon is for people that, that are low threshold clients. So I suppose one of the initiatives though um, that the centre has come up with is the crack pipe initiative. So as a response to the use of crack cocaine around the Ballymun area, we wanted to introduce something that was um, a bit of harm reduction um, because there's a lot of issues mm -hmm. with how people use crack cocaine. And of course, they've been referred to by the addiction clinics and other services as well. So they've got to hear about YAP um, through this initiative and they've come in as well and they've had the opportunity then to have one-to-one -one follow ups Well, at this stage now, YAP is going um, 27 years. It started in 1981. And pointly enough, in, in this kind of spot here, three young people died back in 1981, and that started off the beginning of the Ballymun Youth Action Project when local people got together to try to come up with a response to the emerging drug situation in this community. 27 years on, there's been a lot done, but we're still responding to the needs as the drug situation changes and the um, issues that people are living with in this community change. So I'd imagine going forward, we will continue to respond and adapt to the needs that come in the door of the project uh, for people that are experiencing some issues or difficulties with drug use or addiction.